Hi, this is Mr. Grove, and this will be our last lecture video in our unit on muscles. This one is entitled Muscle Movement and Types, essentially the types of movements that are capable when skeletal muscles contract. So let's get started. The objectives in this lesson are really threefold. We want to learn the terms origin, insertion, prime mover, antagonist, and synergist. We want to be able to identify different types of body movement, and we want to learn the five golden rules of skeletal muscles. Rule number one, almost all skeletal muscles cross at least one joint. Say that one more time. Almost all skeletal muscles cross at least one joint. And for an example, let's take a look at the, uh, the biceps and the triceps and the elbow joint. And what we see here is that here's our joint. And when we get this muscle to do its job, in this case the biceps brachii, when it contracts or shortens, it pulls the lower arm toward the upper arm. And the joint itself, the one single joint, is the elbow joint. And you can see that the biceps is crossing that joint. The antagonist, which we'll talk about what that term means later, the triceps in this case, is doing the same thing. It is also crossing the single joint, the elbow joint. So in this case, we have two examples of one joint. We have the biceps brachii crossing, we have the triceps brachii crossing the single joint. Let's go on to rule number two. Rule number two says, usually, so usually, the bulk of the muscle lies proximal to the joint crossed. Okay, so that brings up a couple of review points that we need to remember. Remember the terms proximal and distal. Let's go back and look at our diagram. So we look at the lower arm, we remember that the lower arm is distal, farther away than the upper arm. And so we can see how this rule is working. The bulk of the muscle, in this case the biceps, is proximal to the lower arm, or proximal to the joint. And the same thing applies to the triceps. The bulk of the triceps is also proximal to the joint that it serves. So that takes care of rule number two. Rule number three says, all muscles have at least two attachments, the origin and the insertion. So once again, all muscles have at minimum two attachments, the origin and the insertion. Let's go back to our diagram. Let's take a look at the biceps. The biceps origin is right here. Okay, so what are we talking about? Well, generally speaking, the origin is the part of the joint, the part that doesn't, you know, the bone that doesn't move that much, may not move at all. And the insertion down here is the movable part of the joint. So we have insertion of the biceps down at the most movable part because when the biceps contracts, the lower arm is going to pull toward the upper arm. Same thing in the triceps. Origin over here off the scapula on the part that moves the least. And it's insertion down over here, the part that moves the most. Okay, so we want to get down the two terms, origin and insertion. When a muscle contracts, the insertion attempts to bring itself, bring that part of the joint, the part that's moving, closer to the origin. Rules four and five state, and this is really just a review for you guys, that muscles only pull. Remember, the only the job that a muscle does is to contract. That's its function. It shortens. Therefore, it's tailor-made for pulling. It can never push. So muscles never push. They only pull. And just remember that insertion moves toward origin. Now there's a lot of type of movements that uh, muscles allow us to do. 
and this is just some of them. To see all of them, I would like you guys to look at pages 197 to 200 in your textbook and uh, also review these as well. So we can see flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, supination, and pronation, and opposition. And I've got a short video clip that will show you all of these. So let's go. Hi, my name is Josh White and I'm a student at Portland Community College Rock Creek and I'll be presenting today basic anatomical movements and the muscles associated with those movements. Enjoy. Here we see flexion at the elbow. Flexion at the elbow requires contractions of the bicep brachii, brachialis, and the brachioradialis muscles. What I like about this little video clip is the uh, student of this community college is also telling you which muscles do uh, the movement. And you'll probably remember some of these as you have to learn some key groups of muscles, some human muscles, in addition to our cat dissection. But what he's talking about in flexion is we're, we're decreasing the angle and in the joint itself. So we're bringing uh, one part of the joint, the movement, closer to another. Remember, we've got the insertion coming closer to the origin. So we're decreasing the angle of the joint. We're closing down the joint. And that's called flexion. Let's take a look at the opposite of flexion. Next, we see extension at the elbow. Extension at the elbow requires contractions of the tricep brachii. Okay, once again, I like his use of the, so you know about the triceps, which is located here, biceps located over here. And you can see what we're doing now. When you extend a muscle, you're opening up the joint. Okay, you're increasing the angle. Okay, so the two obviously work, are opposites of each other, flexion and extension. This is abduction of the shoulder. Abduction at the shoulder requires contractions of the deltoid and the supraspinatus muscle. Now in this case, what you're seeing here in abduction is moving the limb away from the midline of the body or the medial plane of the body. So what, this, what he has done is he's taken the weight and moved his limb, his appendage, away from the midline. And if you've ever worked out in any gym, especially on the machines, you'll see that a lot of the machines have names like the abduction machine or the adduction machine. So let's take a look at adduction. Adduction at the shoulder requires the contractions of the teres major, coracobrachialis, pectoralis major, and the latissimus dorsi muscles. Now in this case, he's done again the opposite of abduction, adduction. He's taken the appendage, the limb, and brought it toward the midline of the body. This is pronation. Pronation requires the contractions of the pronator quadratus and the pronator teres muscles. In pronation, I want you just to think turning forward. You saw what he did. He's turning to the forward part of the hand. So once again, pronation literally means to turn forward. So the opposite of that, of course, would be to turn backward. So let's take a look at it. The reverse of pronation is supination. Supination requires the contraction of the supinator muscle. This is hyperextension of the neck. Hyperextension of the neck requires the contractions of both sides of the splenius, erector spinae, iliocostalus, cervicus, and the trapezius muscles. A lot of muscles we're familiar with. The opposite of hyperextension is flexion of the neck. Flexion of the neck requires the contractions of longus capitis and longus coli muscles. Once again, decreasing the angle on the joint. This is opposition. 
Opposition requires contractions of the opponent's pollicis and opponent's digiti minimi muscles. Love the pajamas. Flexion and extension at the knee require many muscle contractions. These muscles include the gracilis, biceps femoris, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, sartorius, rectus femoris, vasitus intermedius, vasitus lateralis, and vasitus medialis muscles. Okay, a lot of muscles you'll recognize from the cat though his pronunciation is a little bit different than what we've been using. We want to look at now uh, the prime mover muscle, the antagonist, and the synergist. And once again, I've got a short video that I think will clear the, uh, the meaning of these uh, three terms nicely. Hello and welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I'd like to talk about the terms prime mover, synergist, and antagonist in regards to muscles. For any given movement of the body, and I'll stick with one I've used before, um, flexion of the, of the arm, for any given movement such as this one, there is a main muscle involved with the movement, and that's called the prime mover. For this movement, flexion of the arm, the prime mover is the biceps brachii. It contracts the most in order to get the arm to move in this way. Synergistic muscles. These are muscles that either assist with the movement, they help the biceps brachii, or they do other things for the movement like stabilize the joints involved. So when I do this kind of movement, in order to keep the upper arm steady while the movement is happening, for example, the pectoralis muscle holds on to the joint and keeps it steady. So does the... Uh, deltoid muscle, and uh, the latissimus dorsi may be involved, and so might the trapezius. All of those would be considered synergists for this movement. Again, a lot of muscles that we need to know about. Uh, you should have caught that. He was talking about the pectoralis major. We've seen it in the cat. We've seen it in the person, human. Uh, the deltoid, located right about here. He's already talking about the biceps, and he was even talking about the lats, the latissimus dorsi. The antagonistic muscle. For this movement where the biceps brachii is flexing the arm, the antagonistic muscle is going to be the muscle capable of doing the opposite motion or creating the opposite motion. So in this case, it's the triceps brachii. So for any given movement, you have a major muscle involved with the movement, and that's the prime mover. You have muscles that either assist the movement or stabilize the limb or the area of the body. Those are called synergists. And you have an antagonistic muscle, a muscle that is capable of producing the opposite of the movement that's being created. And that is prime mover, synergists, and antagonistic muscles in regards to muscle movement. Any questions, as always, feel free to email or call me. Just let me know. Okay, and you can do the same with me. So in a nutshell, let's take a look at it. The prime mover is the main muscle that causes that joint to move. Synergists are helpers uh, that help stabilize and essentially help the prime mover. And antagonists are always opposing the prime mover. And in the case we were looking at, the biceps was the prime mover and the triceps the antagonist. Okay, so there it is. That's our final lecture. We've got the big cat practical next week and uh, the end of the semester and winter break. So uh, until next time, it's Mr. Grove signing off at Maria Carrillo High School. Goodbye.